We know that uh, uh, we use um, ketamine, lidocaine, dexmedinobinine, even dexamethasone. It's very well known now. Uh, one of the less known molecule, it's perhaps the uh, sulfate de magnesium. And uh, I know that you have experience, Patrice, and uh, can you share with us uh, the experience about uh, how to use a magnesium sulfate uh, as a good adjuvant for OFA, please? Uh, first, uh, thanks for the invitation. And the question is, is magnesium sulfate a good adjuvant? The answer can be already said yes, but, but some uh, nuances can be, uh, can be given and uh, better explained. The global idea is that magnesium from years, from decades, we know that magnesium sulfate have a lot of potential action at the periphery, at the central uh, level. And one of these important is the blockage uh, of the NMDR receptor in the dorsal horn and the potential synergy in uh, when used in combination with uh, ketamine. And just to show uh, a few results of one of the most experienced uh, team uh, studying this in animals, in rats, showing uh, simply uh, at the upper part of the, of the graph that the uh, combination in these two lines of uh, ketamine and magnesium uh, clearly antagonize better the nociception that both of the medication given alone. Mm -hmm. So the idea is simply to have uh, a combine a synergy between these two uh, medications. Is it true in humans? One of the problem is that we have only a few, a few studies and one of the best is this meta-analysis published a few years ago by the Oliveira in uh, anesthesiology, but not uh, focusing on the co-administration of ketamine ag and magnesium, but alone uh, just the uh, administration of magnesium sulfate alone. Globally, the meta-analysis is positive, but you see that there is a big heterogeneity and uh, in all these uh, studies, no control about the co-administration of ketamine. Globally, the effect is positive, so the magnesium helps to improve the postoperative pain control when given during the anesthesia, but the effect is relatively modest, uh, approximately one point uh, on uh, a 10 uh, points uh, uh, pain scores. And on this slide, it's only on early um, postoperative phase. Anyway, it's also positive for the opioid sparing effect, uh, magnesium helping to spare approximately 10 milligrams of morphine during the postoperative period. Um, is it true later? Probably yes. And the answer is here present um, on a, a later phase. So, uh, for example, one day after surgery, here one day after surgery, and maybe later, but it's not so clear. And it's an interestingly, it seems not be present in all the procedures, and most of the negative studies were published in gastrointestinal surgery. So there may be an effect potentially um, in synergy with uh, the use of ketamine, but not so clear, or not so well studied in humans. That's one point. There is a modest effect on pain scores, even given alone. And are the potential other indication, and especially in the context of offer, when we are trying to control the uh, intraoperative hemodynamic uh, stability, if we are not using any opioids for this goal? And the answer is yes. So one of the uh, interesting potential effects in this meta-analysis is that magnesium sulfate uh, versus placebo helps to control better the hemodynamic stability and especially the viability of our trade without, without giving any uh, clear effect, any clear risk on the blood pressure, so any uh, big hypertension. Of course, it's dose dependent. Of course, it's dependent also on the rapidity that you are giving the medication, so many uh, cautiousness is given for this, but globally there is also uh, a clear potential indication in OFA to control the hemodynamic effect, the, the, uh, the hemodynamic stability uh, during the surgery with uh, magnesium, uh, magnesium sulfate. And if you want to go further in your ratings, I propose this review and this Fantastic book uh, edited by uh, Jan Müller and Marc de Kock on the opioid-free anesthesia. Thank you. Thank, thanks a lot, Patrice, for this uh, important uh, focused point on uh, uh, 
uh, uh, magnesium sulfate. So um, one of my first question uh, should be, uh, as I understood from uh, your slides, y you, you spoke about magnesium compared to placebo, right? So this is one of the uh, uh, very interesting uh, uh, um, thi thing because if we compare some things against nothing, okay, it's always better. I mean, so so it, it's only to know um, uh, if uh, when you uh, when you use uh, uh, magnesium sulfate. Uh, uh, uh compared to uh, a small amount of morphine intraoperatively and perhaps uh, in postoperatively uh, in postoperative period sorry uh, are you be sure that the, the difference uh, uh, should be uh, as uh, important as you see uh, you 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 show in your meta analysis for instance are you sure about that of course it's a good question uh, it it will be not so simple to test the hypothesis because uh, one of the problem, and it's an important message, uh, message I think that can be given, is that uh, one thing very important in opioid-free anesthesia is to adapt the management sure. depending sure. on not only the procedure, but first depending on the patient, the patient status, and the patient response to surgery, also the patient preoperative status, and also the postoperative plane that we expect and that we try to uh, to uh, set up for the patient. Um, I'm highlighting this just to say that uh, some randomized, uh, it's, it's clearly challenging our model of randomized controlled trial and especially double blind mm -hmm. uh, randomized uh, controlled trials because the intraoperative management is then completely um, different than for, sure. for others. So basically in the literature, there is no direct com comparison of magnesium versus another uh, medication. It's an important point. There is also no clear observation of the synergy between uh, magnesium and uh, ketamine, uh, even if potentially it can exist. Um, and uh, I'm not sure that, um, that it will be so easy to demonstrate sure for this kind of yeah. endpoint and more globally uh, the, the management um, must be adapt, uh, uh, adapted to, uh, to the patient. Maybe that in the future, and uh, some examples were already cited with the composite scores mm -hmm. of uh, patient satisfaction of at least patient reported outcome measurements, mm -hmm. probably that it's the future to focus on, on the patient's uh, project uh, and the patient's problem more than the technique for the technique. Um, another question that can be a sort of global question for, for you guys. Um, how do you choose to use um, magnesium sulfate in spite of another kind of, do you have some, some choice depending from the patients, the surgeries, the expected pain in the postoperative period? How do you prefer uh, to choose uh, magnesium in spite of, uh, I don't know, uh, lidocaine for instance, or uh, clonidine or dexmet, whatever? Have you, have you uh, sort of a choice criteria, very specific, to choose preferably magnesium in spite of another kind or no choice at all? Oh, for the magnesium, the answer is relatively easy. I, sh I have shown that uh, magnesium can help for the control of the variability of the heart rate. So for a patient in tachycardia, mm -hmm. magnesium can have uh, a good place and can replace- Better than beta blockers, for instance, in for you. Or without uh, the risk of hypertension linked okay. to, to the use of intraoperative okay. magnesium. So safer, okay. uh, I think. And, uh, and not only I think, but it's shown yeah, in no, the no, literature uh, anyway. So um, um, that can be a specific indication, especially if we don't want to, um, to give additional doses of alpha-2 agonists, for example, because we have already given uh, the, the doses that we anticipated as the potential maximum uh, maximal doses for these patients. And are also a uh, counterexample, and for example, a short procedure um, performed 
uh, with the use of mayoral accents mm -hmm. and the potential interaction, not always seen, but the potential interaction between magnesium sulfate and, uh, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and the mayoral accent can, in, in some cases, at least in my practice, can be an obstacle or uh, rendering the magnesium sulfate not, not the, first sh the first choice. Okay. And you guys, have you some, some idea about uh, how to choose preferably one or another kind of, uh, of uh, molecules in the whole farm management? It's, uh, it's, a, it's hard to answer this on a f if you want evidence based and proof, you won't have any. Uh, I can only talk about my experience. I use magnesium sulfate. I add two, I always use lidocaine. It's unless I do regional anesthesia, first of all, I agree with you. The, the best way to avoid the period is regional. But if you don't do original, then I use lidocaine, IV lidocaine, ketamine, and DEX. And if I, uh, in some situation, I can add magnesium, but I only doing s in young patient because I think uh, there's a risk of, to my experience, there's a risk of hypotension. So I'm using it in young patient. And most of the time I'm using it in young patient. Uh, uh, I have in my head the story of a patient that was, uh, uh, he was a drug addict and uh, to all kinds of drugs and including cannabis. And I didn't want to give him any opioids, of course. Uh, it was a um, um, high-risk surgery. No, I didn't want to give any opioids, but I was also kind of reluctant with ketamine, mm -hmm. considering his past. And so I did lidocaine, IV lidocaine, dexmethadone, and uh, magnesium sulfate. And it's, it's one case, I agree with you. But the post-op was perfect. So well, I limit my, the magnesium sulfate to some specific patient. I don't do it to all patients. Okay. I, I think it's the same. And um, the use of the, the all the drug we, we consider for opioid-free anesthesia uh, is really patient-dependent. It depends the indication and contraindication of the mm -hmm. drug. For example, Patrice say magnesium is very good because it will potentiate the muscle relaxant. Uh, I don't like to use the magnesium in elderly patient because of the high risk of hypotension. Um, it's really patient dependent, but if I have a patient, I cannot give a alpha-2 adrenergic agonist, or I can only give very small dose of this alpha-2, then I will add the magnesium. There are some studies published about uh, the potentiation by the magnesium of the effect of the ketamine. Yeah, we saw that. Yeah. So uh, for the people with a uh, drug addict, uh, addict or chronic pain uh, patient, the woman also probably benefit of the magnesium because there is some, uh, uh, they can have a lower level of, uh, um, of magnesium in their blood. So it really depends uh, of the patient, but I don't use magnesium in all my patients. Thank you. So uh, perhaps I, I will want to, to ask a, a question to the colleagues uh, from the other part of the computer. Uh, if you have to be anesthetized by another guy, uh, a friend of you, uh, can you choose the offer or not the offer? Yeah, I think it's, uh, it's always, we will see if we have some uh, answers about this kind of question because it is very important, I mean, but uh, we, we, sp we spoke here about offer uh, quietly, uh, everything is perfect, but I'm not sure that in the, in the head of the uh, colleagues uh, doing anesthesia every day, they will accept to have a, a, a mixing of different kind of molecules as we, we do.